Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with our favorite brain whisperer, Steve Campbell. Steve, Hello. great to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. I'm good. Good, Art. Thank you. Thank um, you. I know that our, our subject today is, so I'll lead into it, but um, uh, I'm very fortunate that I rarely get angry, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, there are things that, that piss me off, but mm -hmm. I really get, <laughs> rarely get really angry for any sustained period of time. I've always yeah. had a way to, in my language, shrug it off. Uh, but I know that there are a lot of people who internalize it, and it yeah. seems sometimes to the point where if they just let it fester and fester within a day or two, they really get oh, sick and, and ornery. Yeah, can. can you, uh, is there a ways that people can, I mean, I'm lucky. I just naturally all my life have been able to do this. It's Some people of, are that way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I know that a lot of people aren't. Is there some way that uh, people can address these things and, and maybe not let it get to them? Well, let me share with you some understanding. It, it really helps to understand the things that we're feeling and thinking. Um, so let me share with you what psychology discovered say in the last 60 years. Number one, there's really two principles that we wanna look at and then we'll sort of expand on that. Number one, okay, angry feelings are acceptable. Feelings are neither right nor wrong. They're what makes us human. They are what makes us who we are. They are the color in our life. Without feelings, everything would be black and white. So people get ashamed of their feelings, and I say to them, no, 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 no. Don't, don't be ashamed of your feelings, okay? Number two, what you do with them can get us into trouble. Our actions as a result of those feelings sometimes need to be addressed. So the actions that come out of anger are something that can do a lot of damage. But the anger itself is something that if we understand it and where it's coming from, it can actually open up things and help us understand what's going on. My wife and I have been married for 50 years now, and they, we went to, to therapy when we were first married. And there was a point in our marriage where because of what Mary went through when she was a child, she did not want me around, on weekends especially. And for a couple of years on weekends, I just sort of had to make myself scarce. But it's interesting while I was doing that, I sense, and I think this is the Lord because I'm a Christian, I sense that what she was going through was something I should not take personally. It had really nothing to do with me. It had to do with something that happened to her. And actually later that time, brought us together and it's one of the reasons why we love each other so very much and been married for so long but what i had to say is okay her anger really has nothing to do with me she's angry at something else but i'm a man and i'm convenient to get angry at so our feelings are neither right nor wrong but it's what we do with them get that can be dangerous okay so let's look at some things that we can do with our feelings as a result of the actions. Number one, communicate your anger matter-of-factly. Communicate your anger matter-of-factly. Simply saying that you are angry doesn't help anything. The reason why I was able to get through those times with Mary is because she explained to me why she was angry. 
And as I saw this, I saw that her anger really had nothing to do with me. But she needed someone to listen to. She needed someone to understand. She needed someone to listen to her without condemnation. And I had to learn how to do that. And I'll tell you, it was a skill that I, I still use, not with her, but with other situations. So simply saying that you are angry is not going to do you any good. You need to be able to, without punishing anyone, explain why you're angry. And let's go back to what I said at a previous seminar that we had together. Our feelings are primarily coming from our beliefs. Our feelings are primarily coming from our self-talk. If you want to know where your feelings are coming from, listen to what you're listen to what you're saying to yourself about yourself. Listen to that. So communicate your feelings and your anger, matter of factly, but with no punishment, no condemnation, just saying, I'm really feeling angry because da 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 da. And I can't tell you how much that has helped our own marriage. Okay. By, by the way, uh, when you're saying that, uh, you might, uh, because it may not be your spouse, it may be somebody who's uh, somebody at work or something, uh, you're not necessarily saying you have to say it to the other person. You at least have to say it to yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So that leads us to the second one, which is sort of a expansion of the first one. Be specific about the reasons that you're angry. And this is not only with someone that you love, but with yourself. Why are you angry? Try to discover that. Be specific. Anger doesn't come out willy-nilly. Anger comes out mainly from what we are saying to ourselves about ourselves, about our life, about the pandemic, about being isolated. It's coming from other things. It is coming from what we're saying about those things. Okay? So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. During our 40th, Mary and I flew to Cabo. We had never been out of Mexico. I mean, we had never been out of the United States. I am not a traveler. Neither is Mary. So Mary's brother invited us to go to Cabo, so we went to Cabo. I lost my passport within the first 15 minutes after arriving at the airport in Cabo. I lost it. Gone. So I spent the weekend worrying about it. And then Monday, I went by myself to downtown Cabo trying to find the counselor. Nobody knew where the consulate was. Nobody could tell me. I don't speak a word of Spanish. So I stopped a taxi driver, logical, and I said, do you know where the consulate? He said in his broken English, of course I do, senor. I'll take you there. Got in his car. He took me 45 minutes outside of Cabo <laughs> to a country that I would not even want to describe. And I realized I was being literally taken for a ride. And I said to myself, we finally arrived at this big, huge building, this fort, and men in uniforms came out. And I said to myself, oh, my God, <laughs> they'll never even find the body. <laughs> and the taxi driver came back and said, I'm so sorry, senor. I'm, I'm, I was wrong. It's not in the old airport. It's in La Paz. That's two hours away. I'll drive you there. And by this time, I was realized, okay, no. So I said, no, take me back to, La, to Cabo. So... By the time I got back to our hotel that night, I was furious, livid. Mary was in the hot tub having margaritas with Tom, her brother, and I was in our bedroom just fuming. Finally, she came in, sat down next to me. How are you doing? And she, I said, you don't want to know. And she said, yes, I do. Because when we went to therapy, we said, we realized, we learned Feelings are neither wrong nor right, bad nor good. And she said, I want to know what you're feeling. And I said to her, I hate you. I hate Tom. I hate Diane. I hate your daughters. I hate everything. I want to go home. I hate, I'm just absolutely. And she said, if I had experienced what you had experienced, I'd be hateful too. Really? Yes, absolutely. 
Here's the next point, though. When she went back into the hot tub, I sat there and I said, wait a minute. My feelings are not coming from Cabo. They're coming from what I was saying to myself about Cabo. Can you see the difference? They weren't coming from Cabo. They, were, they, were, they came from what I was saying about Cabo. So I picked up my iPhone. I went to Notepad, and I wrote down, I still have it, 11 different beliefs about Cabo. July 4th, 2011 this happen we can eat all we want because we had one of those coupons you can eat all we can drink all we want it's beautiful weather there's pretty girls everywhere all these wonderful things that we could enjoy okay i decided this is what i need to lock on to and i instantly began to feel better not completely it didn't happen overnight but i realized the problem was not with cabo it was what i was saying about cabo and I began changing those beliefs, and I felt so much better. To make a very, very long story short, Mary and I went with me together the next day, found the consulate. I had lost, they already, they had found the passport at the airport, picked it up, everything was fine after that. But the point was, my feelings were coming from Cabo. They would come from what I was saying about Cabo. Okay? So. Here's what I want to say about anger. Anger, feelings, are we neither right nor wrong, good nor bad. It is what we do with them that gets them into trouble. If you want to discover where they're coming from, listen to yourself talk. Listen to what you are saying to yourself about yourself and your life and the pandemic and being isolated. And then say, you know what? I'm not going to condemn myself, but I don't really have to think this way. I can believe something differently. And like Cabo, when I said that, my brain said, okay. And the remaining two weeks in Cabo were absolutely wonderful. But I had to understand where those feelings were coming from. And also, I did not condemn myself for it. I just said I had a horrible day. But that doesn't mean the next 11 days have to be the same way. And they weren't. And they you were know, great. You know, it seems to me, uh, Steve, that you've left out a couple of important items here. Okay. First of all, that Mary is the Stephen Campbell whisperer. Yes. Okay. She, <laughs> she knows me. I, I want there to be recognition there, okay, yeah. that even though we love you. She's amazing. Okay, but yeah. but Mary, okay, so John, uh, when Stephen goes away, call Mary, because I think we want to interview. <laughs> okay, and number two, you didn't also say that well, one of the reasons why you didn't get very angry was that even though this guy drove you to, uh, let's say, the, the drug cartel yeah. and was going to sell you as an indentured servant. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, and then he was going to drive you to someplace else two hours away. Mm -hmm. Even with all that traveling, given the exchange rate uh, of five hours in the car, it only cost you the equivalent of about uh, eleven dollars. It cost uh, me forty-five US. dollars. Yeah, twenty-five. Yeah. See, how do I, how do I know? Uh, yeah. Twenty-five dollars U.S. and you got a tour of of Cabo and its surrounds. What I a, saw what a parts bargain. of Cabo, yeah, and I look back on I say, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm really glad it happened. Okay, really the only thing that's happened. disappointing to me is that uh, you didn't say that uh, you went to the uh, embassy or the consulate and, uh, and you were trying to find some other papers and you found that it was a... Your passport was in a pocket. You forgot. The well, weekend. no, it was really neat. I went to the <laughs> Mary and I went to the consulate, went in, and I, the kid that was there was on drugs. Hi, man. What's going on? What's happening? And we're, I said, I lost my passport. You said you have to pay us two thirty-five, two hundred thirty-five dollars. You have to fill out this big form. So I'm filling out this big form. A woman bounces in the car. Hi, I'm Judy, and I'm so glad you're here. And how are you living, Cabo? And you having a great time? And I said to her, we're really not. I lost my passport. She looks at the kid, who I think was on drugs. And she said, didn't we get a call from the passport from the airport last week saying that someone lost a passport? Oh, 
Yeah, it would. It had already been there. So we laughed. <laughs> what can you say? Adventure. Steve, uh, I, I, you you described. I mean, it's a great story, by the way. You described something that I think is very common. I, I heard it called misplaced anger. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more important than misplaced anger. I mean, you were, you in in reality, you were kind of you had a bad experience. Yeah. You were angry at the bad experience. You took it out angry on everybody. everybody and everything. Yeah. yeah. Nothing was worth living through because yeah. of that bad experience. You yeah. didn't. You didn't acknowledge the 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 bad thing that happened from everything mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So it was misplaced. Mm-hmm. But more important than that you really were able to talk yourself out of yeah. the anger yes. because you replaced your bad images of Cabo that you talked right. yourself into. One bad experience became everything was bad. Yeah. You talked yourself out of it by making a list of the good things. You mm-hmm. knew that there, intellectually, mm-hmm. you knew there were some good things. Mm-hmm. Intellectually, you knew you were blaming everything on mm-hmm. one bad experience or two yeah. bad experiences. Yeah. I and mean, we, we don't even know if the cab driver, you know, legitimately- He got 45 bucks, so I bet he had the, the best day of his, of his soul. I'm and, glad. And, and he actually called uh, earlier today to, let us, to thank you for having <laughs> so that he could have paid off his mortgage from that yeah. one yeah i mean he had a one great ride. day so there you go <laughs> so he went over to his wife and said guess what i got 45 bucks from so the, the sucker the, american but who cares <laughs> the key to this is really uh, when we get angry to have the presence of mind somehow mm-hmm. to say i can replace my replace. anger place yes with some good thoughts mm-hmm uh, it doesn't mean that you didn't have the bad experience. No. Doesn't mean that you might not be righteously angry about something. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's okay to be angry. Mm-hmm. And if it was bad, and whether you caused it yourself by losing the passport or the cab driver, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You have good good reason to be angry, but you don't have to be angry. Yeah. You can replace it with yeah positive. Yeah. Realistic ten, positive, not unrealistic positive. Yeah. And 10 years later, when I flew to India to speak, I'll tell you every minute I checked to know where my passport was. <laughs> I did not lose my passport. So there you go. I was going to learn. I thought you were going to say you lost your passport again. No, no. I was, I was, I knew where my passport every second of the, that I was there. Yeah. Now you well, didn't get angry. You didn't get angry in India, did you? No. No, it was an amazing experience. I wouldn't go back, but it was an amazing experience. Well, thank you again for uh, helping us mere mortals who don't know how much power we have over our yeah. own fate and our own yeah. thinking uh, yeah. with another wonderful exa- example of how we can remove the ordinary things that really make life miserable yeah. and reframe them in a way that... Uh, only we can do because our brain believes everything it tells we That's tell That's right. Was our question. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.